I do not regret my choice. I did the only thing that made a goddamn bit of sense. And if swimming among the sharks until my lungs gave out, instead of meekly lying down and dying as ordered, if that makes me a coward, then call me a coward. Lash me, kill me, transport me, but I will not, ever again, be anything but my own man. Simon Price, 1862 Hello, I'm Andrew, and I want to welcome you to Visions of the Past, a podcast all about the lore of Assassin's Creed. This is episode 108, and today we're going to discuss some of the historical events that we see in Assassin's Creed, The Magus Conspiracy, by Kate Hartfield. As the book releases digitally today and in paperback in two weeks, I'm going to stay away from in-universe spoilers when talking about these historical events. I do want to thank NetGalley and Aconite Books for allowing me to read a preview copy of the novel. Before we get into the historical events, though, there are a few changes to the podcast that I want to talk about. First off, as you can tell, it's been eight months since the Celebration Game finished without any podcasts. And I want to thank Declan and James from Let's Talk Assassin's Creed, Luis from the Workery's Archives, and Austin and Shelby from Assassin's Creed Lorecast, for reuniting the passion that I have for the lore of Assassin's Creed. And to my wife, thank you for always having my back in these ventures. When we celebrated two years of Visions of the Past, I was doing a new podcast every week, and at this point, that is not something I can sustain. So, I will now be doing one to two episodes a month, but this will not slow the content that you are already getting from me on Twitter. I am still chugging away at my 100% series run-through, and as I continue, you'll get new photos from the games, and I'm also in the process of uploading videos for the older podcasts that are not yet on my YouTube channel. With all that out of the way, the four historical events that we're going to talk about are the Great Exhibition of the Works of Industry of All Nations, the sinking of the HMS Birkenhead, the 1853 assassination attempt on Franz Joseph I of Austria, and the 1858 assassination attempt of Napoleon III. I think the best way to talk about our four events is to talk about them in chronological order, meaning, first up is the great exhibition of the works of industry of all nations known more simply as the Great Exhibition. The Great Exhibition was planned by members of the Royal Society for the encouragement of arts, manufacturers, and commerce, but most notably, Prince Albert and Henry Cole. One issue that they had while planning was where were they going to hold the exhibition? The competition was organized to design a building that would not only be large enough, but of significant grandeur to house the event. The firm of Fox and Henderson eventually won the contract, submitting plans based upon a design by Joseph Paxton, and he adapted this from a glass and iron conservatory that he had originally produced for the Duke of Devonshire's Chatworth House. When it came to where exactly this would be built, it was the Duke of Wellington that backed the idea of Hyde Park in central London. The design of the impressive glass and iron conservatory, or the Crystal Palace, as it would be more popularly known, was amended to accommodate the park's rather large elm trees before building finally began. Built in just over a year, the Crystal Palace was finished in time for Queen Victoria to open the Great Exhibition on May 1st, 1851. There were numerous items on display, but some of the most interesting were the Cui Noir, then the largest known diamond, the Daria in Noir, a rare pink diamond, the Tara brooch, a precursor to the modern fax machine, the prototype for the 1851 Colt Navy, and the first modern pay toilets were installed here as well. Running until October 15, 1851, a total of 6 million people attended the Great Exhibition, and the money made was used to build multiple museums in the area. Up next is the HMS Birkenhead. While we could have spoke about this ship first, 
as it launched on December 30th, 1845, as the HMS Vulcan, though it wasn't long until it was renamed the Birkenhead. She did have a bit of an issue on September 15, 1847, when she sank the Oratio, whose owners ended up suing the loss in the Admiralty Court, and they won. In 1851, the Birkenhead was converted into a troop ship, and it's as a troop ship that we see her in Assassin's Creed Magus Conspiracy on her trip from Portsmouth to Algoa Bay in early 1852. The trip was under the command of Robert Salmon and was transporting numerous troops to fight the Zahasa in Cape Colony, leaving their final port on February 25, 1852, with between 630 and 643 men, women, and children heading out of Simon's Bay. Hugging the coast to make the best possible speed, she struck an uncharted rock near Danger Point on February 26. The order was made to back off the rock, and when the sea rushed in, the Birkenhead hit the rock again, flooding the engine room. The women and children were directed to the lifeboats that were usable, and Lieutenant Colonel Seton took charge of the remaining military personnel. Before the final sinking of the ship, Captain Salmon ordered for all that could swim to make for the boats. Seton, though, realized that that would cause risk to the boats and ordered the horses to be freed and for the men to stand fast. When all was said and done, only three men tried to swim for it, and the survivors consisted of 113 soldiers, six Royal Marines, 54 seamen, seven women, 13 children, and one male civilian. The aftermath of the sinking led to a court-martial on May 8th, 1852, on the HMS Victory, but none of the senior naval officers survived, so no one was found blameworthy. Our penultimate event is the assassination of Franz Joseph of Austria. Born on August 18, 1830, to the Archduke Franz Karl of Austria and the Princess Sophie of Bavaria, Franz Joseph became the Emperor of Austria on December 2, 1848, at the age of 18. Early in his reign, there were multiple revolutions in the Austrian Empire. One in particular, the Hungarian Revolution, brought the empire close to collapse, leading to Franz Joseph to ask for help from Russia. Tsar Nicholas I ended up sending a 200,000-strong army to defeat the Hungarians, and then placed the area under martial law. On October 6, 1849, 13 Hungarian generals were executed in the city of Arad. This was witnessed by Janos Lebanai, and he started to become involved in resistance movements and saw that Franz Joseph singled out his sister Margit and had her educated. Lebanai saw this as humiliating and shameful and decided he was going to assassinate the emperor. On February 18, 1853, Franz Joseph was on a walk with Count Maximilian Karl Lamoral O'Donnell, observing the exercises of the Austrian soldiers when Lebanai attacked him with a knife. Stabbing at the emperor's neck, Lebanai didn't hit the killing blow as he expected, as Franz Joseph was wearing a heavy coat and cap that covered his neck. O'Donnell, though, used his saber to strike Lebanai, and Joseph Ettenreich, a local butcher, helped subdue him. While the emperor did sustain an injury that took weeks to recover, he did recover to live until 1916. In Lebanon, he was arrested and tried by court-martial and sentenced to death by hanging, which was carried out on February 26, 1853, eight days after the attack. Janos Lebanon was 21 years old. Our last event that we're going to talk about today is sometimes known as the Orsini Attempt. This being the attempted assassination of the French Emperor Napoleon III on January 14, 1858. Born Charles Louis Napoleon Bonaparte in Paris on either April 19th or April 20th, 1808, to Louis Bonaparte, Napoleon's younger brother, and Hortense de Bahunares, while Louis Bonaparte was the King of Holland. He took the office of President of France on December 20th, 1840. And on December 2, 1852, after multiple constitutional amendments, the Second Republic ended and was replaced with the Second French Empire, 
with Napoleon III as its emperor. Just over five years later, on January 14, 1858, an Italian revolutionary by the name of Felice Orsini tried to assassinate the French emperor with the goal of a republican revolt in France that would help all Italian states win their independence. The assassination was carried out as Napoleon III and Empress Eugenie were on their way to the Salle de Pieltier to see William Tell. And I apologize profusely, my French is not good at all. Using bombs of his own design, Orsini and a few accomplices that were with him threw three total bombs. One landed among the horsemen ahead of the emperor's carriage. The second smashed the carriage's glass and wounded the horses. And the third landed under the carriage. The attack itself left eight people and one horse dead, with the estimates of wounded being upwards of 150, including Orsini himself. Getting away that night, Orsini was able to tend to his wounds and return to where he was staying, but he was arrested the next day. Orsini was then tried and was sentenced to death by guillotine, which took place on March 13, 1858. When you look at these four events, it's almost hard to believe that they're all connected within the novel, Assassin's Creed Magus Conspiracy. But they are, and Kate Hartfield does such a great job with the crafting of the story that I can't wait to get my hands on a paperback copy so I can read it all again. But what are your thoughts on these historic events? Let me know over on Twitter at visions underscore AC. And I want to thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in next time for even more about the lore of Assassin's Creed. And if you love stories about Assassin's Creed lore, please tell your friends and follow this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform. And if you want to support this podcast and help provide for new episodes, visit my link tree at linktr.ee forward slash visions of the past for links to my Twitter, TikTok, and other social channels along for information on how to support this podcast. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed. And to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.